Do 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 do. Battery lessons with Tim. Meow. Well, hello YouTube. It's uh, it's the morning. We had a little discussion on one of the Facebook groups about uh, how to tell whether or not your pot is leaking. Uh, and it's hard to figure that out accurately, um, especially after you've made the piece. Ideally, you're going to do something like, here's my bucket of water with pots in it. You're going to do a test bar that uh, you can measure your shrinkage and absorption and stuff with. This is one that I broke so I could see the interior parts. You can actually see that there's like this line of brown stuff here. This is because I had it sitting in water like this and the solubles and stuff that were still in the clay um, scummed on the surface because this piece is not watertight, even though it was wood fired. But we'll discuss, we'll discuss all that. So I've been soaking these for about uh, two hours. There's a collection of pots. Some of them are commercial, some of them are mine. Um, some of them are glass so that we can properly do this test. Uh, so the test goes, we put one piece in the microwave and we put another piece, let me grab the Garfield glass of doom. And we'll do this more accurately during the test. Um, with water in it, stick in both the microwave and nuke the crap out of them. If this gets hot, one, it's not microwave safe. Two, that could be because it has absorbed water. If it doesn't absorb water, probably won't get hot. But let's do the test. Okay, for the actual test, I'm going to be using uh, distilled water. Is it super important? I don't know. Oh, lost the cat. I'm gonna measure out, I don't think that'll fit two cups, so I'm gonna measure out one cup of water. It fits one cup, all good. This is dry, I've towel wiped it off. Um, it had soaked as well. I'm gonna put that in the microwave. I'm going to put that in the microwave. We're gonna turn it on for, I normally heat my coffee for a minute, and we'll do it at a minute first. If I figure out how to do this, time cook. One, oh, oh. Start. This microwave, this microwave has been donated by Casey. I forgot the name that she gave it. Um, it's our stunt microwave right now. <laughs> a stunt microwave means I don't care if I break it. So we're gonna do all sorts of fun experiments with the microwave. We'll see if we can get something to explode. We will electrocute the uh, the gold luster. All sorts of good stuff. Oh, while we're letting that microwave, let's turn this bad boy on. My wife has also let us use her phone for this experiment, which is very nice of her. Okay, so on this, Show you a little bit. Gonna be okay here. Oh shoot! Oh, Velcro doesn't like sticking anymore. So on this, there is a laser beam, and this laser beam, if you can see the little laser on the table there, gives us the temperature of the table. So my table is 59 degrees in the studio here. I'm gonna take this, and we can measure the cup. Boom, let's test it real quick so I don't burn myself. The cup is 79 degrees. That is, uh, or, you know, we can, we can measure that part. The inside of the microwave is 69 degrees. And our test cup is 104 degrees. So that's one minute in the microwave. We're going to put it back in. We're going to go another minute. So the variation on that, I don't know if we can, am I in the camera here? The variation is 77 versus, I don't think it likes the glass. So 30 degree difference in temperature. We're going to go another 30 or another minute though. Time cook, one, oh, oh, start. All right. So I'm going to stop it for a second. So the reason that is, is that water absorbs stuff in the microwave. So little waves are going doodly 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 doodly, and they'll go through pretty much everything until they hit something like fat or water. When they hit that, it takes the little fat molecule or water molecule and goes boink and it wiggles it. 
and another wave hits it and wiggles it. And all it keeps wiggling until this thing starts to generate heat. If it's, there's nothing for it to hit and warm up, it doesn't warm up. So if your crockery is free of water or fat, then this won't heat anything up. So that mug that's in there has a glaze on it that's pretty much 100% iron. People will say, well, iron will cause stuff to heat up in the microwave. And I have a feeling that what's heating up in the microwave is more about um, being in proximity to another hot thing than it is about the actual mug heating up. But that's, that's for another debate. Any hoodle. So if your mug is completely uh, vitrified, then there won't be water in it for it to heat up, right? That's, that's the idea. So here, we're done again. I'm going to turn them so that we're leaving them both in the microwave. Oh, shit. I just got water all over the place, and I'm going to take it out. <laughs> Put that one out here again. Um, little scanner doodle. Zap it. It is now at 109 degrees. And it definitely feels warmish. Oh, I'm going to turn it because I think it feels warmer on that side than the other side. It is. See that? Fancy. That means... I think, and we'll tech, probably by the way I picked it up, this side was closer to the water, which I think had to deal with how it heated up. All right, and that's what we talked about. I'm going to pull this guy out, though. Ooh, and he is hot. I'm going to zap him. He is at 100, oop, 147, 148 degrees. So he is, again... 40, 30 degrees hotter than that. So, I guess if I had another piece of glass, we could test it just glass. And I think that's what we will do next. Cooled the mugs off under cold water. I'm going to dry them off. And we're going to do the same test, but put water in the other one. Because we want to make sure that uh, we've got some accuracy, right? This stuff matters, guys. Well, it matters. it matters to me. I like testing things. Okay. I'm going to fast forward through the rest of this here. Okay. Cup. 80. Five degrees ish, which is a lot like what happened the first time with the mug, and if it matters where, well, up there near the top of the water is 102 at its max. So like a 30 degree difference again, which is what we had on the first one. Now do that again. So, touch that, we get that at 104, 100. This is like exactly the last test. Just different, uh, different pieces. And 148. There we go, guys. It's about the same darn thing, huh? Sweet. So that is a good proof of concept. Next microwave challenge. So now that we have a baseline of microwaving versus, uh, or microwave, microwaving full pots versus um, empty pots, or at least a cup of water versus an empty pot, we've got a bunch in here that have been soaking to see whether or not they've, they've uh, absorbed water. So I'm gonna take them out, dry, dry them off, and uh, we'll microwave them one at a time uh, versus the glass one, the Garfield one. Okay, so I guess the easiest thing for me is just to go through the test. I'll do a time lapse of it. We've got the test cup, and I fill will fill with an accurate amount of water. One cup. Move the rug a little bit, I guess. We got. Garfield cup at 150 degrees. We got the porcelain cup at 100, 102, which is exactly what I would 
same results that we got from it being just glass. So porcelain cup, it's safe. This is commercial mug Megan. We got the Garfield mug at again 150 degrees or so, Ooh, 156. And Megan's mug at 97-ish, 99. Oh, closer to the other mug, the warmer it gets. So about 100 again. So let's call that 101. Okay. It's funny, it stops in the same place each time. Let's see, we got mug. Oh, we should do it so we can see it here. Mug, 150 again, as we'd expect. And cup at 90 something. 101. No, so interesting. Um, this piece is glazed. And it's glazed fairly well. Um, it's, you know, non-crazed glaze. I'm sitting in the water for, I don't know, two hours or so. It, uh, <clears throat> when I microwaved it, this part up here was the normal, normal temperature. But when I picked it up, I noticed that the bottom of the handle was quite a bit hotter. So when I took it out, I decided to put it on the mirror to do the mirror test. And, as we can see here, that it's failing the mirror test. So given if this had sat in the water longer, it probably would have absorbed water throughout the piece more and likely would have gotten hot all the way through. Um, I took a grease, um, which is hotter than any of the other pieces and hotter than any of the controls. So this is absorbing water um, in the bottom. Interesting though that it you know two hours it didn't fully saturate it so it's almost it's it's almost vitrified but it's not all the way. Okay, so in conclusion, things that are vitrified don't get hot in the microwave. A iron bearing glaze seems to increase the temperature. What are we look at that? Would that be five percent? Five percent ish, ten percent ish. Um, in one case and none in another case. So that that. That needs a little more testing. Um, it's a really simple test to do. It's so easy. Um, and th this is more for if you haven't uh, done a vitrification test for your clay, or if you're getting a piece that, you know, you don't know what it is, you can do this test at home. It's really, it's really easy. You don't need, you don't need a fancy um, thermometer thing. You can do it by touch. You can tell a five degree difference by touch. Uh, it, just give it a shot. Um, it's a little more peace of mind and it's something that really you should understand and know before you're selling work one as functional work or two as claiming it's microwave safe. It's a good, it's a good test. It's easy to do. Just do it. Just do it.